Welcome to Lecture Online and here's a nice example of how to deal with simple harmonic motion and in this case we're going to use the energy equation because we have uh, a mass that's oscillating back and forth on a spring and we want to know the velocity and acceleration as a function of position so that's how you know which equation to use. So again we're going to start out by saying energy initial equals energy final and so that means that the one half Ka squared, which is the potential energy you put into the system when you elongate the spring to its maximum uh, amplitude, and that then is equal to one half Kx squared plus one half mv squared. Then realizing we can get rid of all the one halves, solving this for mv squared, so we have mv squared is equal to Ka squared minus Kx squared. It's a square, by the way, right there. Then factoring out a k and dividing both sides by m, we have v squared is equal to k over m times a squared minus x squared and then finally we can say that velocity is equal to plus or minus the square root of k over m times a squared minus x squared. So now we can go ahead and find the velocity at the various locations that they're asking for. So first of all they want to know the velocity at the equilibrium point and at the equilibrium point that's where x is equal to zero. So for part a we can then say that velocity as a function of x equals 0 is equal to uh, plus or minus the square root of k over m times a squared. Now, uh, since x is 0, that part goes away. Now when we plug in the values, what do we get? This is equal to plus or minus the square root of k, the spring constant, which is 1500 newtons per meter divided by the mass, which is 4.2 kilograms. And then we multiply it times a squared. And so a squared would be uh, 10 centimeters. Of course, centimeters has to be converted to meters. So that's 0 0.1 meters squared. And when we get the answer of that, let's see, I have my calculator in my back pocket. Uh, let's see, so we have 1,500 times 0 0.01, 0 0.1 squared is 0 0.01, divided by 4.2, and then we take the square root of that, and we get 1.89 meters per second, plus or minus 1.89 meters per second. Now, notice it's plus or minus because the object could be moving upward or it could be moving downward, so either one would be correct. So that's the answer for part A. What about part B? What is the velocity at x equal 10 centimeters? Now, of course, logic says when the object is at the maximum elongation of the oscillation, uh, then the velocity should be zero. And we can quickly check that if x is equal to 10 centimeters and a is equal to 10 centimeters, well, 10 squared minus 10 squared is zero. Zero is equal to the velocity. So we can say for part b that velocity when x is equal to uh, 0.10 meters is equal to zero. How about part C? Now we want to find the velocity when x is five centimeters. So that's the halfway point between the equilibrium point and the maximum displacement. All right, let's try that. C, um, velocity when x equals five centimeters is equal to, and of course we have our equation right here, um, this one right there, is equal to uh, the plus or minus the square root of um, k over m times a squared minus, and of course x would be 0 0.05 meters squared, like so. Plug in all the other values, so this is equal to plus or minus the square root of k, which is 1500 newtons per meter, divided by m, which is 4.2 kilograms, and then we multiply that times a squared, which is 0 0.1 meters squared minus 0 0.05 meters squared and that should give us the velocity five centimeters away from the equilibrium point so that should be less than the velocity we have over here at the equilibrium point all right so let's try that so we have a 0 0.01 minus 0 0.05 squared equals we multiply that times 1500 divide by 4.2 and take the square root and we get 1.64 meters per second. So this is equal to plus or minus 1.64 meters per, per second when x equals 5 centimeters and, and indeed it's less than what it would be at the equilibrium point. 
Finally, they want us to find acceleration at that very same location. So for part D, remember that we got the equation from saying that F equals minus Kx, and we'll have F equals mass times acceleration. So setting those two equal to each other, we have Ma is equal to minus Kx, or A is equal to minus K over M times X. So the acceleration when X equals 0 0.05 meters, which is five centimeters, is equal to, plug it in the values here, we get minus K, which is 1500 newtons per meter, divided by the mass, which is 4.2 kilograms. And then we multiply that times the position, 0 0.05 meters, and let's see what we get. So we have 1500 times 0 0.05 and divide that by 4.2 and we get acceleration of 17.9 and that would be minus 17.9 meters per second squared. Now, let's think about that for a moment. If the object is five centimeters away from the equilibrium point, and that would be above the equilibrium point, so let's say it's right here, where this distance here is five centimeters, then of course, on the way up, if it's moving upward, the acceleration would be negative because it's slowing down. If the object is on its way down, then the acceleration would be increasing, but it would be a negative direction. So in both cases, the answer is negative one, uh, 17.9 meters per second squared. So the sign does indeed indicate the correct value for acceleration above the equilibrium point. And that's how you do a problem like that.